Hi friend, welcome to the Quiet Connections podcast. Do you feel anxious and not good enough in social situations? Feel like you're weird, broken or don't fit in? You are not alone. Join Hayley and Stacey on a journey to quiet confidence. Picking up key insights to help you feel more calm and confident. So you can finally speak up, join in and feel like you belong too. Hello and welcome to episode 20 of the Quiet Connections podcast. I'm Hayley and today I'm joined by Stacey. Hi Hayley. Hello Stacey. And this is a really exciting episode today because this is the final episode of series one of the podcast. We will be back in the summer, don't worry. It's mad, isn't it? We've done a whole season already. I know, I know. And to think it was supposed to be just a really short season and then lockdown (laughs) happened and we were like, let's just keep going. (laughs) I think we were just enjoying it and realised there was so much more that we could bring um, interview wise and people that we wanted to share with you all. So yeah, we just continued and it's been really exciting. I think really challenging actually also for both me and you, Hayley. Um, so yeah, it's definitely been a comfort zone stretch for us. Um, has. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've come to, to a close of this season, but we have already started recording more interviews to bring to you for season two, um, which I think you already mentioned, Hayley, will be coming out in the summer. Mm, And this is going to be a really exciting episode for you to listen to, because as well as us taking our comfort zone stretch years doing this podcast, we have now invited some of our quiet community members to come and join us. And this is a real stretch for them. So I just want to take a moment to honour them for coming on and sharing a little bit of their story and talking about what's really made a difference in their journey from socially anxious to quietly confident. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? I think if we had asked any of them previously, like six months ago, maybe a year ago, two years ago, if they would like to come on and share their experiences and their journeys, I think they all would have said no. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. (laughs) I think, yeah, a lot, a lot of gratitude to each and every one of them for coming on and sharing their stories with, with us and with you. And I think we'll be really inspired at the, the progress and the change that you have witnessed within each of them and the steps that they've taken very much so yeah and like we are like a part of that and I think still just when you hear it back then it's just it it really is amazing to see how much you can grow how much you can grow as a person yeah for sure and what we've asked these guests to do today is to come on and just share a little about their story where they were and where they are now um because this is going to help you to realize that you're really not alone and you know again this is it's going to help to inspire and motivate you um and then we've asked them to share you know one or two things that have really made a difference in their journey and they have found this so hard because you know we all know it's not a it's not one or two things it's a combination of things um but we've asked them to really pick out something that they feel has been significant for them and then they are sharing a message with you something that they would like you to know if you are maybe right at the start of your journey where they were when they first got involved with Quiet Connections. So let's dive right in with our first guest. This is Amanda's story. I was struggling with depression. Um, I felt quite isolated. I had no motivation. I didn't want to go out the house. Um, Just really struggled to engage with people and just kind of felt safe to just stay inside the house it was easier just not to do anything um it's hard to recall that remember that that was actually me then yeah I just I didn't I didn't feel that what I had to say was worth knowing um you know I, I didn't have the ability to actually stand up and say what I really wanted to say it was like stuck inside of me and I guess my self-worth was just really low you know I just had no belief in myself as a person really so yeah it was just easier and safer just to stay at home on my own and not not communicate because that way I couldn't kind of um get hurt or let down or you know whatever was going on in my head on that day one of the things that I really liked about quiet connections was actually because there was some anonymity with speaking to you and not actually having to sit in like a 
like a counseling sort of room or anything and that really helped me to kind of open up and just be more real because I thought oh you're not going to see me or meet me and that way I felt less judged not that you would have judged me but I think that really helped me to be able to open up more just building up a relationship and being able to talk openly and honestly and not to scare anyone away you know but actually it was quite normal what I was going through um, I just felt really held and um, just very gently it kind of just helped me to have some more belief in myself and just hearing my own voice as well and you know some of the stuff that was mirrored back to me it kind of it didn't feel quite so bad because it wasn't just all snowboarding in my head and just getting bigger and bigger and um, feeding into all the negativity it was just it was releasing by being able to talk about it and by given different strategies to cope with some of the things that I was feeling and I just felt really honoured as a person I suppose by somebody just listening and caring and taking that time out it helps me to feel better about myself oh well actually you know not everyone's going to run away from me when I step outside the door as well you know (laughs) Um, it restored some of that self-belief I guess and you know eventually had a a knock-on effect that I, I did you know I started to feel motivated I started to have some more self-worth and just felt the old me coming back really which was really good it's crazy that we're in lockdown but I have to actually check my diary now because I've just got so much on that things are happening it's like really this is me from a year ago (laughs) it's a combination of lots of things I think the Brenny Brown books are a huge help (laughs) <laughs> which she recommended you know just some of her stuff is just amazing just um having that sense of belonging I think and by being being heard I guess you know just being heard not anyone trying to fix it but just being held in that space and just somebody actually hearing me and that was okay I think that was a catalyst for everything else that kind of came after that really so it takes a while to get in there but I guess that was the beauty of QC you know there was never never felt rushed in anything you know it was just allowing me to just unfold naturally with no pressure and just allowing me to be um which was a beautiful part of the process really looking back on it and what would your advice for somebody else be just to embrace the process actually and just know that things will get better which at that time when you're in that space, you just really don't think that they're going to, you know, but believing that actually, you know, you're worth it, you are worth it. And on the other side of whatever you're feeling and going through is that person just waiting to come out and blossom, you know, and I think um, it's a bit like the seasons in it. We all go through all the different seasons. It's something that I, I say to some of my clients now and a bit like winter when everything's all a bit dying off and nothing's happening, but the roots are still there. You know, we're still we're still here. We're still present. Our roots are there. And it's just not trying to force anything. And I say like, well, it's a bit like a plant. You know, it's got all these branches coming off of it, but the plant doesn't say to itself, oh, I've got to try and force this and make it happen. You know, the buds that come out, it's just like God, you know, the universe, whatever belief it it will just happen by believing and you know like the flower just blossoms having that faith and hanging on and just digging deep and just trusting the process I think which at the time I didn't think it would but but it it has clearly I'm blossoming (laughs) I love that you are blossoming Amanda (laughs) that was so beautiful there's so many great metaphors in there I actually really loved what she said there about um you know like that reference to winter and how on the outside it may appear like the plants are dying off but the roots are still always there you know and it's the same with us no matter what is appearing on the surface the root of who we truly are is still always there it's still in there and sometimes we just need that process of bringing ourselves back to ourselves and blossoming and yeah I love what she said about the unfolding (laughs) <laughs> yeah I felt a real theme of belonging throughout Amanda's conversation there and she also mentioned Brene Brown so I'm going to read a little bit of a definition of belonging from Brene Brown because I have her book Braving the Wilderness right in front of me. Love that book. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Brene says that true belonging is the spiritual practice of believing in and belonging to yourself so deeply that you can share your most authentic self with the world and find sacredness in both being a part of something and in standing alone in the wilderness. True belonging doesn't require you to change who you are. It requires you to be who you are. And I'm just going to read that bit again. Mm -hmm. True belonging doesn't require you to change who you are. It requires you to be who you really truly are. And I think that's the mistake that we make so often is that we think that we need to change ourselves and try and fit in and conform. And, and then we feel this kind of conflict within us because we're not showing up as our true selves. We're just shape-shifting, trying to fit in. And it's no wonder that we feel like we don't have a place in the world. Yeah, it's so easy to feel disconnected from ourselves and from others when you know, we're trying to mould ourselves into being someone that we're not. And in the process of that, we're placing expectations on ourselves or trying to live up to the expectations that we believe everybody else holds for us. And they may not be in alignment with actually what we want or what feels right for us or what feels good for us. And yeah, continuing to to try and live life in that way is you know, emotionally painful. It's It's hard for us. And I think, you know, we all want to feel like we belong and the truth is is that we do all belong it's just recognizing that and finding the finding that within ourselves or rediscovering that within ourselves that our place of belonging has always existed in us first and foremost and then with those who connect with who we truly are and not what we're trying to think that we need to be yeah so true just to finish amanda's message there to embrace the process and just believe that change can happen I think that's so powerful the process is a struggle the process is challenging and it sucks (laughs) and you know as Brené Brown says embrace the suck we have to go through that pain and discomfort to grow that is how growth happens absolutely and um I think one thing that really stands out for me just in terms of like looking at this word struggle is that so often we associate struggle with suffering when struggle and suffering are actually two very different things. And, you know, we need struggle to grow, but we don't need the suffering aspect. And actually the suffering aspect is what happens when we try to resist that struggle or try to resist that growth. And, um, you know, so I think, finding some kind of distinction or separation between the two that you know struggle is part of the adventure and and challenge of life (laughs) that it doesn't need to or it's not the same as keeping ourselves in a in a place of suffering I love that okay who are we listening to next so next up we have the lovely rose Oh, who also, let's just mention that Rose is the one who has recorded the intro um, for this podcast throughout the whole thing. Thank you, Rose. (laughs) When I first met Hayley from Quiet Connections, I was very lonely in myself. I had limited confidence and no self-esteem or self-belief. I didn't feel worthy of others' time, effort, help or love. With Haley's help and quiet connections, I began to feel differently about myself. I discovered I could do the things I was scared of and that I was likeable. It made me feel more rounded as a person. I joined the groups and did different group activities and had fun while being my true self. Happy dance and all. I think the biggest thing I've learned from Haley and also Stacey is to trust both myself and others. I have belief in myself as a good person now. I can act with grace and love to myself as well as those around me. This has enabled me to develop friendships with new people. I'd say be your own authentic self, quiet or otherwise. We're all worthy of love, time and attention. Yay, we so are. (laughs) So true. So true. I I love what she said there about happy dance and all. (laughs) (laughs) I think we all have a happy dance inside of us somewhere. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. 
Um, yeah, I think what really stood out to, to me there was that sense of, um, well, I think two things actually. There was that trust within yourself and, and with yourself, but also extending that to others and also the, the growing of compassion for yourself and for others as well. Um, yeah, I think those are two incredibly vital things that, that we need. And, you know, I, I know from my experience and from those who I've spoken with, and I know with you, Haley, as well, that quite often when we feel socially anxious, there is, I want to say lack, although I don't really like that word, but there is that sense of lack of trust within ourselves that can you know, be that root for all the self-doubting and that feeling of I don't trust my own decisions or that I'm making the right choices and therefore we tend to place a lot of external value and validation on what everybody else is saying around us rather than listening to our own intuition and instinct and our own voice inside of ourselves. Absolutely. And this is exactly what happens. We just become disconnected from our own selves, as well as from the world around us, really. And it's so important to start rebuilding that connection with ourselves. And what Rose is talking about is showing up as who she really, truly is, being that person in the world, um, stopping hiding away. And it ties into that self-trust because we need to be real and true to ourselves. And we also need to set those boundaries when things don't feel good for us. We know that within us and we need to be able to stand up and say, okay, this doesn't feel good. Let's do something else. Let's do something about it and have those brave conversations. And Rose is doing this and I'm loving the progress that Rose has made. She brings such warmth and kindness to whatever she does as well, doesn't she? She's awesome. Um, but just touching on that uh, thing you just said there about boundaries and, um, you know, again, Brene Brown has a lot of research on how compassion and boundaries work together and how the most compassionate people are those who are practicing and living their boundaries. Yeah. And, and that can be done very, very compassionately. A boundary doesn't have to be something that creates conflict. You can do that in the most compassionate way, extending the most generous interpretation of somebody else's behavior and still go, okay, this is what I need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so something perhaps to start reflecting on are what, what are your boundaries? What are the things that, that you need in place in order to um, value yourself and your own self-worth and allow others to treat you in the way in which you deserve? Yeah, and you might simply write a list of these are the things that are okay and these are the things that are not okay. And that's a really good practice to start getting really clear on what your boundaries are. Yes. Oh, that's just reminds me actually of um, another way to approach that as well with, in terms of what feels yummy and that you want to pull towards you and Ooh. what feels icky and that you want to push away. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> For those who are, yeah, perhaps a little bit more kinesthetic. All right. Should we uh, listen to the next one? Yeah. This is Lizzie. Let's have a listen to what Lizzie has to say. The me before I'd connected with you guys would hardly make eye contact would not speak at all I would be the wallpaper in the background I'd be present but I couldn't dare have an opinion or share it if I did have it if I knew it if I identified what I thought or felt I wouldn't give it out freely to people that were kind of in my audience or group because they might reject it they might not approve of it. It might cause a bit of confrontation or a bit of unease if it's a differing opinion to someone. So it's just safer to be quiet and not speak. And I don't do that now. I can't. Like, it doesn't sit well with me because I am more okay with who I am. There is that higher level of acceptance in it. It's really difficult to pinpoint one main thing, Stacey. If I really had to push, it's going to sound way too simple for the, the significance that it had. But it was it was the learning or just that shift in perspective and that change that I am not my anxiety. Like anxiety is something I experience. It's something that I feel. It's not my identity. It's not me. I'm not inherently wrong or broken or faulty when I'm anxious I'm me and I'm whole and I just experience anxiety and anxiousness in specific moments and that distance between it not being me and who I am allowed me to 
get comfortable with the uncomfortableness of it. I think that's pretty much the biggest part that allowed that allowed me to manoeuvre. It gave me that wiggle room. It's a, it was a describing word, I guess. That's what I said. Like, I was anxious. It was me. Like, I'm tall. I've brown hair. I have blue eyes. You know, I'm anxious. And actually, no, that's not true. I, I, I can feel anxious. But it's not who I am. It's very empowering. Because once you realise that you get to choose what you think and how you decide to think it, it's, it's massive. It's definitely, like, it's a big part of my journey. Like, I don't know if I would be doing what I'm doing now if I hadn't have had the coaching with you. Like, there's hope and there's a future, right? There's a future and there's hope for the future. And I am really nervous about it. I still feel anxious. I still have anxiety completely quite a lot of the time. But it doesn't, I'm not in that place where I can't function because of it. It doesn't completely shut me down. It doesn't completely make me freeze. There's also a lot of compassion and understanding, but I'm also okay with the fact that I actually, I am quite quiet and I'm very empathetic and I need, I take that and I feel it so I can get quite tired quite easily. And my self-care looks like that. I need to be able to retreat and have my quiet, calm space. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. Whereas I think before it would have just added to the feeling like I was wrong or faulty because it was going against the grain, if you like, of what I assumed. And what actually, I don't think I assumed as if I made it up wrongly. I do think there is a level of society, like it is out there. There's those stereotypes. Because really, when you're little, your beliefs all come from outside because you're kind of like a blank canvas, I guess. So why wouldn't I have learned what everybody else thought? And then it's just, I've never really challenged it. I've never really questioned it. Um, it just, it boxed me into that place of not being okay as I was like I am really grateful for the difference the experience of quiet connections has made I found a sense of belonging a community I found a different level of acceptance within myself and the compassion for me when I'm experiencing anxiety I continue to get lots from the various workshops and podcasts since I'm an active member in the app after my coaching had finished there's like an unsaid rule or a knowing isn't there when you're on that app that other people are there because whilst their content's very different to yours because we're also individual with our experiences the theme is the same it could be anxiety that shows up like flight it could be like I was very much freeze and being invisible but the, the theme of anxiety runs through it it's a fear and a worry isn't it it's a connectedness for people that are quiet and whether the it doesn't matter how the quiet shows up for them, right? It could be literally don't speak ever. It could be quiet as of in don't ever share what we really think, but very vocal. But quiet can manifest very differently for people. And that space that you have created is a way to connect people that feel like that app might be relevant for them. So that tells me that on a level somewhere, I'm not on my own. Right, so much in there. <laughs> um, I think the first thing actually that I want to touch on, because I know this was a huge step for me as well, was that disidentifying with anxiety as being a part of who I am. And, you know, just like what Lizzie said there, she saw anxiety and that feeling of anxiety as, as a describing word for who she was, you know this is who I am I'm anxious and I think so many of us you know go through life feeling that way that because we experience anxiety and we feel anxious in in certain situations that we start to attach it to to who we are as a person and the moment that we can start to separate the two and to recognize that anxiety is an emotion, it's a feeling, it's a response to our surroundings or to what we're believing or thinking, then we can start to see the space between who we are and what we're experiencing. And just like Lizzie said, it's in that space that you can start to see that there are different choices and responses and that that is where change can happen. And I, I do believe that it's it's so, so empowering to, to be able to start seeing that. Um, well, I do want to mention that 
um, an extra thing that Lizzie did share was that she had to experience that for herself in order to believe that it was true. So previously she had mentioned that she had read and heard lots of things that were kind of similar and along those lines, but it wasn't until she felt it that she that that made like the biggest shift so I think there is a level of integration and and patience there with ourselves with this Mm, you have to go there to know that yeah (laughs) (laughs) I I can so relate to that as well I mean when I was doing my coach training one of the biggest shocks was the way that I was talking to myself Um, and I realized how much I was holding myself back and keeping myself in this real kind of like stuck victim-y space because of the way just just because of the language that I was using really and what I really loved about what Lizzie shared there was that she still experiences anxiety and so do we and that is normal (laughs) because it's an emotion (laughs) yeah yeah we are humans therefore we are going to experience anxiety this is how we're supposed to function the problem for us is just when we get stuck in that anxiety and we don't you know we're not able to move through it and process it you know that anxiety that we're experiencing is saying protect protect keep yourself safe so you know it's it's really understandable to when you start seeing it from that perspective of like why you may be avoiding situations even if you feel like you want to there may be a level there of um some sense of like this may be unsafe for me in some way and I think part of the discovery is to get to know what maybe some of those things are that are creating those barriers and then you can start to work with them as opposed to trying to fight against them or or avoid them altogether. Yeah sometimes we have to just rewire our brains and tell ourselves that some situations are safe when we've been believing that they're not safe throughout our lives and you know the reality is you logically know that these situations are safe and yet you still feel the fear so when we're stuck in this cycle of avoidance we're never facing the fear we're never sitting with it sitting with the discomfort and moving through it and that's what we really have to do but in a very gentle way yeah (laughs) which I think is the the key thing that a, a lot of us don't recognize or that we're not taught is that actually there are really gentle ways of doing this and taking those really small steps and and stretches it's not about throwing yourself in the deep end like so many of us get told yeah um, can reinforce that that panic <laughs> yeah and this is something that Lizzie touched on as well this expectation that we do feel in society and schools mm. are a really good example of this so we've spoken to some you know teachers at colleges who have been like adamant that students need to go in and do presentations straight away because they will be expected to do this when they graduate and they're not really willing to allow the students to slow down and take smaller comfort zone stretches and build up to doing a presentation to the entire class they're determined to throw students in at the deep end and some of them obviously get it some of them are much much better but you know conversations that we've had these this has been the loudest voice in the room yeah, um, I think there's a few things I have to touch on. But as you were saying that, that was actually just reminding me of what Amanda was saying in terms of like the flower doesn't force itself to grow <laughs> before it's ready. Yeah. <laughs> and I think if we can keep that image in mind, we can like, yeah, there is, we, we need space, need space mm. to be able to, to grow and flourish in, in ways that feel at the right pace for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And likewise, I think a lot of that is going to come down to actually changing the views and the culture that we live in that says that there is no space for that. (laughs) Yeah. Just think about how a seed grows. That all starts in the dark, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, that's nice. And I think, again, like if we touch on a little bit there of what Lizzie was saying around finding that acceptance in embracing the the quietness and learning to love the quietness because again I think so many of us received that message growing up that it wasn't okay to be quieter or to be sensitive or to be you know more gentle in nature shall we say (laughs) Um, more observant and and things like that so learning to love those parts of us is 
is key, is really vital. And again, there's a lot of steps and compassion that we can take along the way to really start embracing those those quieter qualities within us. Yeah, for sure. And I know this comes up in other conversations too. It's something that a lot of the people that we work with are, you know, they, they're struggling with in the first place that they see quiet as something that's negative because this is what they've picked up from maybe family or society um, from school. So, okay, let's dive into Esther's conversation now because I know that Esther touches on this too. I found human interactions really difficult. And I had a very intense fear of being judged, feeling unworthy and also feeling a a lot of shame. I very much thought that I was defected and that there was something wrong with me um, and that I really was, what I thought of myself was who I was and what everybody else thought of me. I was very much still in the problem and and now I don't feel so much in the problem if that makes sense had you'd asked me to do this I don't know however long ago I probably would have said no because I don't know whether victim is the right word but I still very much felt hard done by I'm very sorry for myself whereas I'm coming out of that and actually starting to practice the stuff that, you know, we've looked at before and the, the ongoing stuff on the app and on the, the podcast and that, you know. So even with the breathing exercises, Hayley, I still bobbed it off for ages and thought, no, that won't work, that won't work. You know, and now I've got the willingness to give it a try. Now I'm very open-minded to it, which is change. So if you're not helping yourself, you can't help others, can you? Well, it made me start to challenge my limiting beliefs and seeing them for what they really are, that my thoughts are not my reality. Basically, they aren't true, that that they're very powerful, but they don't define who I am. Um, So it's helped me to detach from them. To start with, I thought I was completely doomed because I'd felt trapped in this pattern of behaviour and thinking for many years. And I really thought that that was my lot in life. But now just realising that actually I'm not what I call myself or all these labels that I had said to me over the years about being shy, quiet, kind of being seen in a, a negative light, really. And that how much it's made me challenge it and to stop rejecting myself, which is something you said to me. And I'm learning to believe that I am enough. You were the first person to ever mention self-compassion to me. And I thought, I nearly was going to swear then, I won't. (laughs) But I thought, what does that mean, self-compassion? It's not something that I'd ever considered before. It was foreign to me. And now I I completely understand what that means. Because I tell you what, I've gained a lot from the podcast. I've listened to all of them. And there was one I think I've listened to about three times, one of the earlier ones you did. And and it made me realise that so much of this stems from childhood and that it's learnt behaviour. And I am not that person. I was really intrigued. I thought, wow. You know, it was stuff that I'd never even realised before. So, yeah, grateful for that. And Esther, what's your message for people going through something similar? Well, that there's hope. There really is light at the end of the tunnel. And just because you're used to thinking and behaving a certain way, it doesn't mean that that is your destiny, basically. And I would definitely recommend doing comfort zone stretches because there's no joy in being stuck. And um, and they say life begins at the end of it. And it's definitely true. Wow, there's so much in that one. I know. And echo so much as well of what other people yeah. said. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> I think that it's, it's, you know, her story where she started is just so relatable. And mm-hmm. what I really want everyone to know is that if you are experiencing social anxiety, 
um, anxiety in social situations, even if you don't call it social anxiety, then underneath that, there's always this sense of I'm not good enough. We haven't worked with anyone who have, hasn't uncovered this for themselves. And it's, you know, this protective mechanism, this self-rejection, we're rejecting ourselves, avoiding situations before somebody else can reject us because that's what we assume is going to happen. And it's really tough. It's really tough. But I think that like, like Esther says, realizing that this behavior is learned, it's not who you really are. It's not, it's not who you are as a person. Um, and realizing where it comes from, that really is the first step. It shows that you can change. And Esther did mention one of the podcast episodes. That episode was episode two, which is about the first step from socially anxious to quietly confident, the missing puzzle piece. So if you haven't yet listened, I really encourage you to go and listen to that episode because I feel like the, the content of that episode is really helpful to just unlock that mm -hmm. belief that you can change. Yeah, and just just seeing it like for the first time it might be the first time that like Esther said like that you may have even considered that all of this that you're experiencing has been something that you learned like I remember when I first learned that I thought what <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I wasn't born this way <laughs> and you know that can it just makes such a huge difference doesn't it to know that like if you've learned something it it doesn't define who you are mm. because, and, and if you've learned it, then, then you can unlearn it too, or you can learn something in place of it. Yeah. So sometimes we just need to understand that how it's come about in the first place. We need that little bit of knowledge to be able to go, okay, I'm going to give it a go. And, and Esther talks about that willingness to, to try. And she talks, she talks about moving from being very problem focused to being solution focused and looking at possibilities and thinking about what she can do. And I loved how honest she was there about, you know, it, I just fobbed off the breathing exercises that you gave me. And she did. <laughs> That's exactly I what she did. <laughs> oh, I thought it as well. <laughs> and that resistance that we feel in our journey is really normal. And, and maybe you want to share a little bit about that, Stacey yeah <laughs> when I like first really started I suppose on this growth journey and unpacking a lot of these beliefs that I held and um was really starting to like dig into what needed to be healed within me I experienced so much anxiety um and you know a lot of this started for me when I actually did my coaching training when I was doing the NLP training um, because it was learning through practice <laughs> so you had to you had to do the explorations and the discovery and you had to go to those uncomfortable places yourself in order to learn how the the exercises and the the tools and stuff worked um, so obviously that brought up a lot for me um, and things that I hadn't considered before things that I hadn't looked at and when that started happening I was just like no 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 <laughs> this is no rubbish this is all rubbish I don't want to go there I don't want to do this um it was just yeah this feeling of like no none of this is true like all, all these techniques are rubbish this can't, this can't be right <laughs> I just was really really resistant to opening myself up to the possibility of change and what's interesting about that I feel is that when I look back on that what I can really see is that I was afraid you know mm. I, I was fearful that the moment I started to to shift or change any of those beliefs I was opening myself up to the possibility of being hurt to the possibility of rejection to the possibility of putting myself into situations that were not or not perceived to me as as being safe so of course you're going to experience some resistance because there's gonna be that part of you that still wants to keep you safe. And you can start to offer yourself some compassion to be like, okay, <laughs> thank you for wanting to keep me safe, but I, I need to do this. <laughs> yeah, there is another way. There's greater wisdom within you and you can tap into that. Mm -hmm. I think it's like, you know, we build up this model of the world and imagine like we've built this thing from Lego and then we're doing this 
this learning and this growing and you know all of a sudden our model of the world is crushed and it falls to pieces and we have to start picking up pieces and going right how does it really fit together and how do we want it to fit together we have to um you know we have to realize that the way that we think we've also been taught that in childhood <laughs> whether we are seeing ourselves in this kind of victim space or or being very general in that you know a lot of people will talk about everything's going wrong and we'll focus on the negative things and we actually lose sight of the positive stuff that's going on around us so there's a lot that we can do to really gently shift the way that we think and and really have a more empowering mindset and then I think what I really what I really love I, what I really want to end on with Esther's conversation is her message about there's no joy in being stuck yes. how powerful is that <laughs> and so true so yeah true. yeah if if you are on the edge of you know starting this journey for yourself or or taking it up a level and going to the next step just ask yourself you know how, what would it be like if I was still here in five years time and I didn't take that step what would it be like if I did how amazing would that be and all the possibilities that could come from that <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah everyone that we've spoken to for this episode has been so surprised you know so surprised about where they are right now and that's just just amazing to see it's really beautiful to see how they have flourished how they've blossomed how they've grown yeah oh it is it's so so wonderful isn't it so inspiring as well and just to touch on that a little bit, actually, I think that is quite um, the the amazing thing about this is that once you start taking those stretches and you start opening yourself up to that, it's the unexpected things that tend to create the most joy, mm -hmm. the, the things that surprise you and that shock you and that make you think, wow, I didn't realize that I had that in me or I was capable of that or I had that ability or that I would enjoy that. And when we start to open ourselves up to to those experiences is when I think you'll really you'll really find that sense of vitality and joy and you know compassion and love for yourself <laughs> yeah like Rose was saying in hers she's realized she can do things that she never thought she could do and mm -hmm. she's started by gently stretching her comfort zone with us and joining our groups and and being seen and practicing new things within that group setting yeah Okay, we have one final story to listen to, and this is Julia. I mean, the first time I came for like a coaching session, I was hitting a bit of that spot where I didn't really know what I was doing with my life at all. I couldn't figure out what would be the best way to spend it in the most fulfilling and valuable way. And this is where I realized after like a lot of thinking and a lot of self-reflecting and a lot of like... <laughs> despair <laughs> I realized that yeah I needed help kind of understanding what my purpose was because I hadn't identified my values I had identified roughly who I was so what do I do now basically and so this is when I got in touch with you Stacey um but yeah we had a few sessions where you asked me some like really good thought-provoking questions um around like okay so your purpose does it need to be something that is grand or something that needs to be very visible? Do you need to go into the public sphere to make a change and all that kind of questions? Or can you do it in a quiet way? Or what does it mean to you to make a change? Um, and all of these questions actually made me realize that I didn't need, I didn't need to do grand things to be able to hit my purpose. It was all about making the space around me the way I want it and then it had to knock other things on other people it really did help me ask those like like the whole thing around like does your purpose need to be something absolutely grand or can it because to me like I, I could not conceive achieving purpose without having to without having to be some sort of like public figure uh, or to go and meet people and you help me consider it in a way that feels much more manageable and much less scary so that was definitely something that helped me move forward and find some reward and purpose in my life really when we had that whole discussion about worth and I told you ah oh, it's all linked to performance and achievements and you told me like when if you saw somebody 
oh, they had no idea what they had achieved or anything where you say that they're worthless. And I would never say that. Like, yeah, so what, what makes you worthy? Well, just so being here, like, yay. <laughs> so that's also something you taught me. <laughs> Before, I would be someone who was not self-aware at all of how I would feel. I would feel ashamed of my feelings. And also I would be somebody who would keep things in. And since I started my journey, I realized that all these emotions are here for a reason. And today I'm much more observant of those emotions. Before I would try and hide all these, or what, what we call negative emotions, I would try and like conceal them or not, or be ashamed of them or try and not feel like, really feel not happy about them and just like hide them away. But today, every time I feel uncomfortable, or I feel those feelings, I try to welcome them in, in a more in a kind of way, because if they are here, there's a reason. And I want to observe this reason. If they are here, that means that something's going on within me that I should pay attention to. And this is what this journey has been all about. And that makes me feel strong, you know, because all our lives, well, at least all my life, I've been kind of told like, you know, oh no, you should not feel this way. Oh, come on, smile. And I realize how much damage this does because we're completely annihilating a side of ourselves and something that is profoundly human. And we just shove it away, whereas we should definitely listen to it. Um, the more I listen to my emotion, the more the kinder I am to myself, the more compassionate I am to myself and the more self-aware I am as well. Trust that going through that journey is really hard. Uh, I think it's the hardest thing I've ever done ever in my life. But to trust that it's it really is for the better, that it's going to be a journey uh, to of self-discovery and observation of ourselves and honesty with ourselves as well, to be honest around how we feel, why we feel this way, what makes us feel this way and how we can change it and to challenge ourselves it's insanely difficult but it's the most liberating thing I've ever experienced in my life it's the thing that makes me feel hope even though sometimes I just feel setback after setbacks that I'm still the same person um there are moments where I feel like oh well that's a good thing because I've reacted in a way I would not have reacted two weeks ago um, so change is difficult and slow, but it happens. Embark on this journey. The person you'll become will be an amazing human being. You'll be so proud of because it'll be you. I just, I love, yeah, that last little bit that she said. It's like, you will be so proud of the person that you become because you will be you, not all the other stuff not all the expectations or the things that we've spoke about earlier about molding ourselves to fit in and to be approved by others like all of this that um that you start working on to start peeling away these layers is about you becoming you mm -hmm. <laughs> <yourself> back. <laughs> yeah and I think we don't give ourselves permission to do that enough. We feel like we need to show up and be perfect and be like the, this person that we expect everybody else wants to see from us. And we don't give ourselves that space to learn and grow as much as we could do. And when I was doing my MBIT training, I learned this phrase that I really love. And I like to see us not as human beings, but as human becomings. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Lovely. It automatically puts you in that learning frame of mind, doesn't it? It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, just like Amanda said, it's that unfolding process, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like well, constantly becoming, constantly evolving, constantly learning. We are, we're never stuck. We, we may feel stuck at mm -hmm. times, but, you know, there's this sense of like we are always evolving and yeah. always something more something new and we are made of water how can we be stuck <laughs> <laughs> we have movement just yeah built within every aspect of of our being yeah um there's so much more in in julia's as well that i wanted to touch on and i think that sense of 
attaching our, our sense of self-worth to our achievements or to what we do can is, is something to really I suppose dig into and to start shifting our, our perspectives around because again if we're and likewise like uh, this is the lesson that the majority of us grow up learning because if you think about it, when you're in school everything's about your grades mm-hmm. and you know b- what you do <laughs> it's not about your efforts anymore is it yeah. and I think like from that from that space it's very easy for us to fall into that place of comparison of comparing what we've done or what we've achieved to other people and then perceive ourselves as potentially less than them um it adds that extra pressure on onto us to always be in this state of performing and perfectionism and being the best I say in air quotes because what really is the best um Mm. (laughs) and and when we feel like we can't live up to all of this you know it's it's really no surprise that that we may consider ourselves to be less than worthy to be less than others to be not good enough uh finish what is on the end of that sentence for you what do you feel like you're not good enough for or at um so shifting our perspectives and our focus on to that everything is about the the process it's about the learning it's about the steps that we take and that can shift so much for us and make things feel so much more easier because all of a sudden we're focusing on the growing and the learning and the blossoming and all these other things that everybody else has already mentioned. (laughs) Yeah and perfection does not create connection it gets in the way of connection because we're not showing up as our true selves Um, and everything that Julia was talking about was about getting back to to your own vulnerability and we all have these vulnerabilities and when we show up and we are allowing ourselves to be vulnerable that's how we create connections that's how we learn and grow it involves getting comfortable with the uncomfortable (laughs) which is uncomfortable it is uncomfortable (laughs) even the idea of that can feel uncomfortable (laughs) but I do love what she said there about um like a lot of this this journey that she calls it for her has been about learning about emotions and allowing all emotions to be present in her life and um, actually using them as feedback I think that's so valuable to see our emotions as a sign that there's something there to look at you know whether or not that says that oh this feels good for me and I enjoy this and but also this doesn't feel good for me and what is it about this that you know feels wrong or feels uncomfortable or that makes me feel unsafe in some way um like every emotion there has some level of information and feedback for us and again when we can allow ourselves to be in that space of curiosity to explore what that is it will tell you so much about who you are and and what you want Mm. Yeah. And Julia mentioned about having her emotions dismissed. And I think that happens happens to all of us. You know, we're living in a, a culture that we don't seem to have a lot of empathy for each other in the way that we can sit down and really hold space and listen to each other. That's a real skill that a lot of us don't have. We're not taught it. And when that happens we start to feel like there's something wrong with having those emotions and we try and hide those parts of us and we're like you know I need to show up and be strong and hold things together Um, and we see a lot of people who are like that and and I was like that myself (laughs) and realizing that actually it's okay to have emotions and to show emotions and when you show that emotion when you show that you are not you know the superhuman person who can hold everything together that really creates connection that really Mm. opens the door the door to your heart I suppose yeah I think that's what we're all really looking for isn't it like I I don't know anyone who has said that it has felt good for them to share how they're feeling and for someone to tell them you know it's not okay to feel that way or Mm -hmm. you know this is what you need to do to change that because sometimes actually given advice or receiving advice is not the thing that actually we need it's 
it's just having someone to sit there and listen to us Mm -hmm. and to say I understand and it's okay for you to feel that way and you know I've I've been there too I felt similar things yeah Um, just to let us know that actually those feelings are normal they're so normal every emotion has its purpose and has its place and yeah we we need to (laughs) allow space for that in society yeah and the more that we do that with ourselves the more that we can do that with other people because no longer do we feel like we need to fix something for somebody else or or dismiss their emotions because it's uncomfortable for you to be a part of yeah because really that is essentially what's happening isn't it Mm. is that all those times that if you've ever felt like your emotions or what you're feeling or what you're experiencing has not been heard or has not been received in the way that you would have liked it to then really the thing that's going on for I'd, I'd say the majority of people is that they are uncomfortable with holding space yeah. for the emotion that you're expressing it was never about you it was always about them exactly and what I really loved so there's there's quite a nice theme throughout these stories in that just like Julia spoke about the knock-on effect with others there is a ripple effect and we are seeing it with these five wonderful people as they go out into the world and they they really show up they show up as who they are and some of them are volunteering and some of them are creating businesses and and having jobs that are actually out there helping people now and you know it's just so beautiful to to see that ripple effect and that's why we do what we do because you know that little little bit of support can really impact somebody else and then they go out and they impact somebody else and on and on it goes and that is how we change the world mm-hmm. and how powerful is that like so powerful I was actually um after the recording with Julia we had a little bit of a chat about Frozen 2 <laughs> <laughs> and how um you know the moment that um Elsa stepped into her place of belonging and being who she really was she created that space then for Anna to step into her rightful place as well so you know none of us ever operate in a place of separateness you know every action that that you create has that impact on somebody else yeah so you know from that perspective like we're all connected there's no way to see that we're not all connected and that you know when you change yourself you help create change for someone else they help create change for someone else and yeah like you said Hayley at some point it really does change society and everything within it (laughs) it's huge (laughs) so huge (laughs) and that's such a beautiful beautiful vision isn't it Mm -hmm. (sighs) So what we want to leave you with is hope. In every single one of these stories, you have been offered hope. Hope that you can change, hope that you can grow, hope that the world around us can catch up and change too. I, I really I really like that, Hayley, that the world needs to catch up and change <laughs> with us. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> because we have all spent so much time trying to change ourselves to fit into the world. And maybe, maybe it's time that actually the world needs to change. <laughs> yeah, it is time to reframe yeah. quiet. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So I'd just like to say a a great big thank you to you for listening to our podcast um, and for sharing and rating our podcast and really helping us to get the message out there. And I encourage you between now and season two to please continue to do this and just share it with people who you feel are going to benefit from hearing these stories from all of our guests. And then we'll be back in July to start a new series of podcasts. If you have any ideas of things that you want us to cover, please do drop us an email and let us know. You can contact us at hello at quietconnections.co.uk. We would love for you to get involved. And please do come join us on the uh, Quiet Connections app and to join our community and connect with other like-minded people who are you know, experiencing similar things to what you are now and who are going through this process and will go through this process with you. Yes. Yeah, come and join us. And with that, please do stay connected. 
Thanks for listening. You can find the show notes from this episode at quietconnections.co.uk. Before you go, please subscribe to this podcast to stay up to date with all future episodes. With gratitude for the support of the National Lottery Community Fund.